It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham in Essex. And I'm also the founder of the Tree of Life family, which is the growing network of growing churches across the UK. And I am so glad to be talking to you today. I am really excited about having the opportunity to share God's word with you, to inspire you and to challenge you. I don't believe for one second that it's a coincidence that you're watching today. I believe God has set something up between the two of us to get something good over to you to help you believe him to help you understand how much he loves you, to help you walk in your dreams. Now, last week we started the new series and we started talking about really the church of Jesus and what should the church look like? And we go to the Bible. We kind of got a bit waylaid by different things, but one of the things we found out is that the church should be people who, when they come together, provoke one another to dream big, that we should have a unity of faith, a unity of expectation. I explained that we're never going to have a unity of doctrine on planet Earth. There's always going to be disagreements over different things. And that's not a problem for Jesus. He's bigger than that. But we need to have a unity of expectation. We need to expect that we're going to do the things that Jesus did when he was on Earth. We are the body of Jesus Christ. If you're born again today, if you're a Christian today, you and I are family and more than that, we're part of the same body. You're part of Jesus' body, and I'm part of Jesus' body. So there's a unity there. And it may not have to believe the same things about everything, but what it means is we should be expecting Jesus Christ to be doing the same things today that he did 2,000 years ago. We should be expecting the lame to walk, blind eyes to open, deaf ears to open. We should be expecting, like they did on the day of Pentecost, for the Holy Spirit to move. And it says here in Acts chapter 2 that there was a sound from heaven. We should expect sounds from heaven. Do you realize, do you understand, heaven wants to speak to you. God wants a word with you. Jesus wants to speak to you. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. The whole Godhead wants to reveal things to you. God gave you the Bible so you could hear him through the Bible. God gave you the Holy Spirit so you could hear him through the Holy Spirit. God gave you me so you could hear him through me. God gave you a church and a pastor so you could hear him through your church and your pastor. God gave you Christian friends so you could hear him through those Christian friends. God gave gave you all of nature so you could look at nature and hear God through nature. God has built so many Christian books, Christian CDs, Christian tapes, Christian ministries. So much is on planet Earth that it is easier to hear God than it has ever been. Absolutely easier to hear God than it's ever been. Well, I was driving here today. I got in my car, I put a CD in my car, and it was a CD of a preacher. And as I was listening to the CD, you know, I've got some CDs in my house, some old CDs. You know, when did CDs become retro? I remember when CDs were new, and now they're out of date. I don't, I don't have a CD. I just realized this week, I don't have a CD player in my house. I don't have a single CD player in my house, you know? So I wanted to listen to these CDs, so I put them in my car to listen to. And I was listening to the CD on the love of God, and God started speaking to me through that CD. Do you know that 20, 30 years ago, nobody had a CD? Nobody could hear God for a CD. Now we can hear God for a CD. Do you know that 100 years ago, none of you could hear God through television? But now you've got me and other ministers on TV, and we can speak the Word of God, and God can speak to you through what we're saying. Do you know that 500 years ago, nobody had their own Bible? Now, people like William Tyndale and people like Martin Luther, people like those, that uh, John Huss in, in Czechoslovakia, people like those gave up their lives. John Wycliffe, another one in England, gave up their lives so that we could have a Bible and hear God through the Bible. And you know that that is part and parcel of God's will for every one of us, that we hear him. And there's so many different ways we can hear him. The number one way we hear him is from the Word of God. But what we need to have is a sound from 
heaven. You and I need to be able to hear heaven speak. We need to be able to hear God. And when we hear God, great things happen. Hearing God can produce more prosperity in your life in one minute than you working for 100 years. I have a friend in America. His name's Greg Fritz. He's one of the, the best preachers I know. And uh, Greg's starting to go on TV in America. And he put out a need, and he said, this is how much I need. And my wife and I prayed, and we gave some uh, money, and we gave some a Tree of Life's money, some of our TV money that we'd set aside for TV, and we gave it to help him get on TV. And we gave the amount that we believe God said. And we just sowed that into his ministry because we believed we'd heard God. The next day, the next day, within 24 hours, I get offered a free slot on a satellite pointed at India, beaming to a billion different people. And I'm now gonna be speaking for free once a week to all those people who want to tune in about the Word of God. Because I gave into one ministry, God then opened up a door in my ministry. But what was the essence of it all? I heard God. When you hear God, doors open. When you hear God, good things happen to you. But so many of us are so busy watching nonsense all the time. I know it's not you, you're watching this. But, you know, so many people are so clogged up with hearing everything else. People come to me in a prayer line and they go, I can't hear God, would you pray for me? And I go, yeah, I'll pray for you right now. Then they go, Satan's been having a go at me all week. And I go, well, why is it so easy for you to hear Satan? Because you're tuned in to that level. You're tuned in to doubt. You're tuned in to condemnation. You're tuned in. You need to do a retune. Get into the Word. The Word is like the tuning thought. And as you start reading the Word, reading the Word, reading the Word, you start to hear God. You start to think like God. You start to have God thoughts. A number of years ago, I was driving through London. I was driving through Enfield in North London. And I was on my way to visit a friend of mine. And as I was driving down the road, just a normal road, you know, uh, built up area in the UK, so that means the speed limit's 30 miles an hour. And God told me, he says, drop back to 20 miles an hour. I said, okay. So I, I slowed down, I heard God, and I obeyed God, and I dropped down to 20. Well, there's now half a dozen cars behind me. They're not happy that I'm going slowly at 20. And this goes on for a few minutes. And I'm, I'm, there's a lot of temptation to just speed up. There's people behind me, they can't get past because there's a little bit of traffic on the other side. And so people are annoyed at me, someone beeped the horn at me, a couple of cars back, but I'm just trying to hear and obey God. And as I came around the corner, there was a tr truck, sort of a, a pickup truck, came around the corner and it had big roof tiles, about a meter by a meter, big roof tiles on the back of this truck. And as it came around the corner, one of those roof tiles came flying off and about 20 feet in front of my car, smashed on the road to pieces, big sort of concrete slate, bang, smashed everywhere just went flying off like a missile and hit the road right in front of my car. Now, I don't know if God was trying to save my life or someone behind me. It looked like it been someone behind me would have hit if I'd been going the right speed. But God, I believe, saved someone's life that day, certainly saved someone's car from a lot of damage because he told me to slow down and hold up the traffic. Now, you got to realize that listening to God can save your life. you got to realize that listening to God can open up doors. you got to realize that listening to God can change your life. you got to realize that listening to God can make you in the right place at the right time. Listening to God can get you promoted. Listening to God can get you into a new place. Listening to God can get you into new levels. And so we need to have a sound from heaven. Your churches should have a sound from heaven. People should hear from heaven. When your pastor is preaching, there should be a sound from heaven. I had a lady phone me up a few months ago. It wasn't particularly funny for her, but I, f I found the story amusing because it verified something I know. We have a sound from heaven at Tree of Life. And what happened was, she phoned me up and she said, a pastor, she said, my husband came to church there. I said, I noticed that, I saw that. He, my husband doesn't only come to church. I said, I'm really glad he came. She went, well, I'm in big trouble with my husband because you're preaching this morning. I said, I did not preach to get you in trouble with your husband. I'm really sorry what happened. And what happened was I nailed that guy. When I spoke, there was a sound from heaven and I spoke prophetically into his life. I didn't realize I was doing it, I was preaching. But I dealt with issues that he was facing so specifically that when he got in the car with his wife to drive home, he said, I'm very unhappy that you're gossiping to pastor about me. You tell the pastor of this church all the things about me that I need to deal with in my life. I'm really upset. And she said, I've never spoke to pastor about you. All I've said to pastors, would you pray because I want my husband to come to church? That's all I've ever said. And that was the truth. You'd only ever said that to me. She said, oh, you told the pastor's wife then. You know the pastor's wife. And the pastor's wife told the pastor, that's what you're doing. You're just gossiping. She said, no, I haven't. I said, well, I'll tell him I, I haven't. I said, but your husband needs to know that Tree of Life Church, we have a sound from heaven. God speaks to us where we are. You know, I was preaching once. 
in a church, I was a guest speaker, it was a Baptist church, and um, I was speaking about being what God called you to be. Do what God's called you to do. Don't try and do something else. And I said, if God has called you to be a taxi driver, don't try and be a full-time evangelist if God's called you to be a taxi driver. Now, when I said that, I wasn't being prophetic. I wasn't spooky. I hadn't heard God, you know. I hadn't heard like Charlton Heston, Ben, use a taxi driver as an example. No, none of that had happened. I just thought I was using an example. I thought I just picked a profession, taxi driver. I thought I just picked it. And um, I went back to that example two or three times during the sermon. And the third or fourth time I went back to that example, there was a lady sitting right in the front row. She said, okay then. Okay, I will. I'm sorry. And I said, what is going on with you? And it turned out she was a full-time taxi driver. And she was a very successful evangelist, and she ran her own taxi firm. And uh, what she did was that she'd take every 10th customer for free and say, that's my tithe, that's my gift to God, and she'd share the gospel with them. And she was getting people saved. She was a real, you know, witness to the power and goodness of God. And she was getting people in her taxi saved, and she would help people and, and be such a good taxi driver that she was shining like a light, she was salt and light, and people were getting saved. So the church started to pay her to do evangelism. And she left the taxi and started working as evangelism, and it wasn't as fruitful. It wasn't as, she didn't enjoy it, she didn't like it as much, and she wasn't bearing the same fruit. And she couldn't work out why. Why? And what happened was she stepped out of a lane. And so she stepped back into a lane and her life was back to being fruitful again and back to being happy again. God's called you to do something, don't do something else. And I, what, what I'm trying, why I said that story was for this. I didn't know how prophetic I was being. I didn't know I was speaking to the woman on the front row. I thought I was just picking an example. But there was a sound from heaven in church that Sunday morning. God was speaking. And we need to have a sound from heaven. And sometimes it's explicit. Someone gives a message in tongues and someone gives an interpretation or someone prophesies over the church, over someone in the church, or someone has a word of knowledge for healing or something. Sometimes it's explicit. Sometimes you don't even know you're doing it. You just someone say, how did you know? How did you know I needed encouragement? Or you, go, you, you buy someone some flowers. How did you know I was going through something? Or you just, you know, do something. How did you know I needed that? How did you know that's what I was in need of? And so we need to realize that we need for church to be godly, for our Christian life to be everything it should be, we need what they have here in Acts 2. We need a sound from heaven. You and I need a sound from heaven. We need to hear from heaven. And how do we hear from heaven? Well, number one, we get together with other people who can hear from heaven. The best way to do anything in life is to find people who can do it and learn. You know, you, you can read all the books on how to drive a car. You know, if you're young there and you would want to learn to drive, or maybe a bit older want to learn to drive. You can read all the books, you could watch videos on how to drive a car, you know, but until you get in a car with someone else who can drive, and they show you, and they tell you, and they train you. Really, that's what discipleship is. That is someone, you know, watching someone do something, and then copying them, and then them supervise you, and then you need less and less supervision until you can do it yourself. Less learning to drive is a great example of what discipleship is. And so, you need to be with people who can hear God. How can I hear God? Hang around people who hear God. And I'm not talking about Sister Strangemouth, you know. I see the Lord. I see, I, hear a, I see a spider. And on top of the spider's a fork. And on top of the fork's a knife. And on top of the knife's a chocolate bar. What can it mean? I'm not talking about strange stuff like that. I'm talking about stuff that when God speaks, it has the thumbprint of God on it. You know, that's something I think is really important. Is that there's just a thumbprint. What, I mean, what do I mean by the thumbprint of God? I mean, there's something in that you just know that's God. I was in a church not that long ago and God gave me a word of knowledge and it was a golfing illustration. And it was about someone had taken a golf shot and it had gone off, but they could get back on and they could get back on and they could win the game still. And I don't play golf. I don't like golf. I like going for nice walks, okay? Uh, golf ruins that walk for me. Uh, I've never been a big golf fan. You know, I know a lot of ministers like their golf, but I don't like my golf and that's fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind you playing golf. But why am I telling you this? Because when God spoke to me using a golf picture, I knew that wasn't for me. Because God wouldn't do that to me because it wouldn't resonate with me. And God will speak to me using another picture. And so I, I got up and I shared that word in the church. I said, this is the word. And there was a big guy, guy, big guy, about six foot three, six foot four. He came forward and he was crying. He's like, that's me. I've come off, but I can come back on. And I prayed with him and it was beautiful. It was wonderful. And as he's about to go and sit back down, I said, excuse me, sir. I said, one, one more question for you. 
I said, what's your golf handicap? And it was like 18 or something. He was a golf player. He loved playing golf. He played every week. And so that picture didn't just resonate with him because he'd gone astray and then come back, but it, God spoke to him in his language. That's what I mean by a thumbprint of God. I remember going to see a man who was a friend of mine. He had a very powerful prophetic ministry, and um, he was a good friend of mine for a long time. And uh, I went to take another guy with, and this other guy was going, I don't, I don't believe in prophets, I don't believe in prophecy, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. I said, well, I believe you're going to get spoken to tonight. I believe God's going to speak to you tonight. And uh, this guy was a, a builder. He was a house builder. He put roofs on houses and stuff. And um, we knew each other for quite a while. And we're sitting in the back, and my friend points and said, God's called you to be a builder in the kingdom and starts using building language. My friend, my, my prophet friend had been a builder. My friend I brought to the meeting was a builder. And he starts speaking to him, building language. And man, that's going to resonate, isn't it? That's the thumbprint of God. How did you know? How did you know that I was a taxi driver sitting on the front row? I didn't, but we have a sound from heaven. How did I speak to a man so accurately he thinks his wife's gossiping about him? A sound from heaven. And God wants all of our churches to have a sound from heaven. That's something we can all pray for, isn't it? We can all pray that we would hear this Sunday a sound from heaven. That, and if you say, well, our church is, stop, don't criticize your church, okay? Your church is hard enough, and it's hard enough pastoring it for your pastor, because you're in it. It's hard enough for him. Don't criticize it. Get up a little bit earlier on Sunday. Don't rush in late after the second song and oh, 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 try to find your seat. Come in early. But before you come, spend some time in praying. Pray in tongues if you can pray in tongues and say, Lord, I want to be a sound from heaven. I want to hear and, you know, and just help me. You know, and I'm not saying you have to jump in front of the church and take the microphone off the pastor and punch him in the nose and go, Shalala, I'm not saying that. But maybe at the end of the service, you look around and you see someone and you say, would well, you want to go out for lunch later? Do you want to go for lunch now? Let me take you out and take you for lunch. How did you know I just needed someone to talk to? How did you know I just needed someone to pray with me? How did you know that I just needed someone to hug me? How did you know I just needed someone to give me 10 pounds? How did you know I just needed? And you could be a sound from heaven. I'm not saying it's got to be a big platform showy ministry, but that thing starts to happen all over the church, man. That's going to be the most welcoming church in your town. People are just going to want to go. We need to have a sound from heaven. Amen. And this sound on the day of Pentecost was a rushing, mighty wind. So what do we know about this sound? We know three things. One, it's rushing. What does that mean? It's moving from one place to another place. We need some movement in what we do as Christians. You know, so many Christians are just stayed. They're almost like a corpse. You know, like, are you dead? You know, my, my spiritual father, Dave Duell, he's now with the Lord. He said that in one church, uh, the, 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 someone died in a service, and the, the ambulance came in. They took three goes before they got the right dead body. You know, because everyone look like a dead body you know and that, that, that's how he tells it I'm not sure how true that story is but the point is this so many people in churches like they're dead no there's got to be some rushing rushing we need to be rushing people we need to be urgent you know come to church on time get yourself there get yourself prepared get yourself ready and if God speaks to you and you hear a sound from heaven there should be an urgency about it well, I'll come next week. The amount of times I've been in church, not so much now in Tree of Life because I've trained my people and built my people up and edified my people, but the amount of times I'm in church where I give a word and somebody comes up to me afterwards and goes, I had the same word. And I go, I know you did, but you didn't give it. And there was no urgency to you. We've only got a two-hour service. You've got to give it when you got it. You know, You're rushing. Push some speed on it. Put some legs on it. And I'm not saying be like frantic, you know, but put some speed onto things. We're moving from one place to another. The wind of God is not this little slow, still wind. It's rushing. And I'm telling you now, God is about to do some rushing things in your life. Some healings are going to start taking place. Rushing. You're going to rush from being sick to being healed. You're going to rush from being broken in debt to being out of debt. I'm talking about first the blade, then the ear, then the full ear. I'm talking about no more consumer debt. I'm talking about no more debt on your car and then no more debt on your house. And it's going to rush, whoosh, and you're going to get that. You're going to rush, whoosh, and you're going to be free from that sin. You're going to rush and start ministering life to people and bless people. And you're going to rush. And some of you, your ministry, some of you are watching this and you're discouraged. There's somebody in particular watching this. You're a minister and you're discouraged. Where's my fruit? I'm telling you, get ready for the rush. Get ready for the rush. When there's a sound from heaven, it rushes. When you hear from God, things rush. That's number one. It's rushing. Number two, it's mighty. When God speaks, it's mighty. It's powerful. I was doing online church because of the lockdown just last week and um, doing an online service, and I had four words of knowledge. 
for different miracles. And I had people text me, and for every word of knowledge, there was at least one person text me, for some of them two, for one of them three. So we had about eight people healed in one service, all sitting in their living rooms or bedrooms, watching on their devices. Why? Because the power of God is mighty. When there's a sound from heaven, it's mighty. You could get healed right now. Man, I start talking like that, and people are going to start getting healed. Somebody's actually getting healed from a sinus problem right now. That sinus problem's gone. You're going to, you, people are talking about having an operation and having your sinus drained. No, it's gone right now. You can breathe normally right now. It's, it's significantly better right now. And when you go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning, it's going to be even significantly better. And within a week, that thing's going to be gone in Jesus' name. It's going to rush. Whoosh, and it's mighty. The power of God is mighty to heal. Somebody's knees are being healed right now. You find it difficult to walk, difficult to maneuver on your knees. You're being healed right now. Do you know why? Because there's a sound from heaven and the sound from heaven is mighty it's a mighty rushing wind or rushing mighty wind it rushes and if you're going to be a, a person of the spirit and you're going to hear from heaven you're going to be mighty you're not going to be weak you're not going to be cowardly you're going to be bold i mean that's four they get bold boldness is what gives us the tongue talking bold church that the bible has we need to have that kind of church we are i'm so tired of people talking out half the mouth we as christians need to be mighty and need to be bold we need to be bold about what we say, bold about what we do. Someone's in a wheelchair. You know, I was, I was in a situation in Italy last year. And there was a lady in a wheelchair. And I was about to say to the interpreter, see if she can get up. See if she can get up. And I was about to say it. The Holy Spirit said to me, Ben, don't say if. There's no if. And I said, okay, there's no if. I said, get up in the name of Jesus. You know, Peter never said, well, see if you can get up then. Paul never said, well, see what you can do. No, get up in the name of Jesus. Start walking right now on your feet, said Jesus. And so I did it the way the apostles did it. I did it the way Jesus did it. I did it with boldness. I said, get up. And that woman got an Italian translator translated, and she got up and she started walking, and she started walking around the room, and she was healed. And then the next day, when I went back to the conference in Italy, the next day, we found out, she didn't even have the bones in her hips to walk. God had given her new bones. But how did you get that kind of miracle? How did you walk in that kind of life? Boldness. Boldness. Because you have the might. Be strong. Be bold in the might of the Lord. And you have the might of the Lord. That's not just for me. It's for you. If you're born again, you've got the might of the Lord. And if you have a sound of him, when you've heard God, be bold about what you've heard. Be confident in the things of God. If you've got a scripture and you're standing on a scripture, you be bold on that scripture. This is the word of God. You can trust it. It works. So be rushing. Be mighty. And the third thing is it's a wind. You know? And you can't see a wind. How I many of you know wind's invisible? But you can see what it does. You know, you, can, you look at it on a windy day, you can't see the wind, but you can see the trees, and you can see the leaves, and you can see everything else moving around. Maybe, you know, you see things moving around, getting blown about by the wind. You can see the effects of it. And I'm telling you, people might not see you, and that's okay. You know, some of us want to be seen all the time. You know, we've got this obsession with the spotlight. Uh, I see so many Christians recently with just obsession with the spotlight. You don't need the spotlight. You don't need the limelight. You just need to serve. You just need to do what God's called you to do. If you, if you, if you are desperate for the spotlight, when it's turned on you, it will destroy you. I'll say that again. If you're desperate for the spotlight, when it's turned on you, it will destroy you. And you've seen that in Hollywood. You've seen the spotlight destroy people. You've seen that in Christian circles as well. You've seen people become Christian superstars and then just get destroyed by their fame. No, you need to not be moved by fame. You need to be out of the wind. I don't care if you see me. I want you to see the effects of me. You know, I've, I've raised up and trained a lot of pastors in the last 10 years. And it's going to be more. And it's going to be more. And it's going to be more. And you know what? When they minister, when they do stuff, I'm happier. I'm happier. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, some of you heard of Smith Wigglesworth, the miracle worker. He said the happiest day of his life was when he could send someone else out to go and work a miracle and no one even knew about the name of Smith Wigglesworth. No one even knew about who he was. He liked to be like the wind. You can see the effects of what he taught, the effects of how he prayed for people, the effects. But if someone else was there and got the glory, that's best by him. You know, think about that. Be a wind. Don't have to be seen all the time. Just let the effects be seen. You know, you don't have to get upset if someone shares their healing testimony. You know, I've, I've had people, I've had people get offended at the church and so upset at me and so disappointed in me because of what I did. Maybe I let them down. I could have been wrong. I don't know. But so upset that what's happened is that they've gone and they've got healing testimony because of something that I, I prayed for them. And I prayed for them and they got healed. But now they're retelling the testimony and they're, they're, I'm not in it. And all the retelling testimony, in one case in particular, one lady in particular is retelling her testimony around the UK, and it's another minister. She's put another minister in the story because she would rather that minister pray for her than I did. I prayed for her and she was healed. I was there. <laughs> Different people I know was there, but she's now telling it with another minister. And I, you know what? I'm like the wind. 
as long as the effects are being seen, as long as Jesus is getting glory, as long as people are hearing about the healing, I'm, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. I'm never going to go and straighten that out. I'm never going to speak to I'm not going to go and say, well, you know, you know. I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to be anything other than the wind. I don't want you to see me. I want you to see the effects of what I believe, the effects of my prayers, the effects of my trust in Jesus, the effects of my walk with Jesus. You, you know, be like the wind. You don't need to be seen. Let the effects be seen because it's the effects that change life. It's the effects that move things from one place to another. So I'm challenging every one of you today. Be a sound from heaven. Learn how to hear heaven. If you know how to hear heaven, start with here. Start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start looking at Jesus. Start listening to Jesus. Jesus knows how to hear heaven. Get yourself in a company of people that know how to hear heaven, that know how to hear God. And get yourself around them and don't quit on those people, even if they're a bit strange, even if they do things that upset you. Don't quit on those people. Be in one accord, in one place, in the same place, and get yourself to a place where you hear from heaven. And then when you hear from heaven, be rushing, be moving, and change things, and be mighty be strong in what God's done for you and be like the wind don't, you don't need to get the glory let other people see the effects of it they don't need to see you they don't need to have your face in limelight you don't need to be in the spotlight you can just be who you are and you don't care who gets the glory Amen. Awesome. Praise God. I hope this has helped you today. I hope it's helping you see how we can move in the power of God, how we can have that unity of faith and that unity of expectation because we can hear from the same God, hear from the same heaven. And I'm praying right now for everyone listening to my voice right now that you would experience a sound of heaven today, that today you would hear God, today you would hear his voice, and today when you hear his voice, you wouldn't harden your heart, but you'd be soft-hearted and listen to him and do what he says in a rushing way, in a mighty way, in a way in which you don't care who gets the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, it is awesome to have you with us today. It really is. And I really believe that this message has inspired you and challenged you. If you want to get more messages, they're all free of charge on our app. And there's the link right there, tree.church slash app. How can I make that link any easier for you? Tree.church slash app. App. And our app is on Apple devices, on Apple TV, your Apple phone, your iPad. It's on Kindle um, devices. It's on Roku TV. It's on your Android tablets. It's on your Android phones. Just go to tree.church app, choose what device you have, and you can get our app. And our app has got several hundred hours of free teaching. Now, if you think that's awesome and you say, that's awesome, I want to take that all and listen to it for free, you can. But if you also think that's awesome and think, you know what, I want to support Tree of Life Church. I want to support this TV ministry. I want to invest in it. Go to tree.church slash dream partner. It's right there in front of me, tree.church slash dream partner. And you start becoming one of our dream partners. I'm believing right now for 100 people to give us 30 pounds a month, 100 people to give us 30 pounds a month. Maybe you're one of those 100 people and you start giving 30 pounds a month and you're going to help us transform the world. Take this message of the God who's just too good to be true, the God who does big things, the God who will help you walk in your wildest dreams. Um, you can take that message and help take what we're sharing with people to the ends of the earth. And uh, man, we would love for you to be one of our dream partners to so sign up. And if you want more stuff, then go to tree.church slash YouTube and you'll be able to listen to some amazing teaching. We've got, again, hundreds of hours of stuff on YouTube, not just me, but all the Tree of Life team, plus some wonderful guest speakers as well. Listen, it has been just a joy to be with you for this time. And I want you to know, I want you to be absolutely aware and rooted and grounded in this truth. God loves you and God is on your side. God is for you, not against you. And I'm telling you, good things are going to happen to you this week. So join us again next week. We'll keep talking about the church. I can't wait to see you again. Have a blessed and awesome week.